Welcome to Tour Truck Tuesday, another perfect day here at Carlsbad, tailor-made, the kingdom. The wind is coming off the left. I'm starting my practice session. I've literally hit probably, let's check it out for you now, 15 balls or so. And it got me thinking about wedges. It got me thinking about shots. It got me thinking about information. I've hit 19 golf shots, loosening up, getting going, hitting into a breeze. And the talk is when it comes to your wedges, you want to take the information of every shot and record it. But there's also a way out here, and hopefully you've heard about it, about how you take speed out of shots to give you a yardage. But every time you practice, the message from this video is you're gonna get information. So I can see here from these 19 shots, and it is with wedges, and the grass is a little dormant. Some of these divots are a little deep for my liking. So, a little tip to help you with that. I've gone seven iron. I'm gonna place an alignment stick down the grip. You need to rotate. This is gonna help your whole game as you loosen up, but it's massively gonna help your wedge play. Now you don't have to hit balls doing this, but you do need to feel as you turn that you keep that stick off your body. If you wanna hit balls, and it can touch you slightly, but take the speed out. Remember this is a seven iron. And you're gonna get the flights like that. Do the practice swings first, because if you start to strike it and it does hit you, you're gonna be in some severe issues with that one. So do the practice swings first, but that is how you control the flight. And on a day like today, when we're loosening up and trying to learn about our golf clubs, you want to control the flight. So there would be the first piece. Take the alignment stick down there and rotate. Move quickly into, and it's not a day that you'd go aggressive on wedge shots. It's not at all because of the breeze. The more aggressive you go with the swing, and what do I mean by that? You know, you're saying oh, aggressive. I'm talking about speed. The harder you go at a wedge, the more backspin you're gonna create. The more backspin into breeze like this is gonna take the yardage down. So try to, when you hit your wedges in the wind, club up for sure, but also imagine that alignment stick down the back of the golf shaft and rotate. Be sure to rotate and put them out there. Be sure to be honest with yourself on the strike, look at where they land, but keep the motion of the body moving. And if you can do that, you're gonna be able to control the flight a lot more. Take the numbers that you're hitting these shots, and I've been recording them as I've been going along, and I'm averaging about 97, 98, 100 yards with a 56 that's not smashed. That would be the call out for this. I'm not trying to hit this golf club super hard. That's never what you wanna do with your wedges. I can't press that enough but you wanna get a consistent number. As you start to build that, go down in loft, and then try and give the same motion, same smooth action, same turf interaction. If you have a track man, great. If you're on a range where you hit balls and you know what's going on, look at the landing, and purely in conditions like this, with wind like this, I'm gaining four or five yards, but you're getting more feedback from looking at the flight. You're getting more feedback from making the correct pass, club goes down the shaft, making the correct move at the golf ball. You're getting more feedback there, introducing you to get into the rest of your practice session. Again, watch the ball flight. You can see it hit the ramps. You can see it go up. You can see the spin getting to it. That number comes up right now. Carry 103, total 104. So only gaining, like I say, three or four yards. Then the next thing you wanna do is you've got your wedges out here just to build a feel. So I've got about five, six yards difference between these two mill grind threes I'm trying out. One's a 52, one's a 56. I'd probably expect to see a little more than that, but I think the numbers are a little bit skewed because of the wind conditions. But again, it builds a picture, doesn't it? If you're gonna go out on the golf course and you're gonna play with these wedges, how much further does this one go when the wind is like that? Then what I want you to do, take any of them, the 52, the 56, and calculate 
find another number with it. If that's my smooth full one, how far does a, if this is a clock face, 12 o'clock, three, six, nine, how far does a nine to three go? Now, it's a feel, okay? It's a feel. All this stuff is a feel. It's all subjective to you. It's all important because you can build it as you go and get a fitting on your wedges. The bottom line is you're gonna go for a fitting about wedge shots, you're gonna talk about bounce, you're gonna hit a lot of different chip shots, but you should also go in with this picture of how far you hit the current wedges you have. So again, I know a full one, the difference I'm getting today, about five yards, normal day, I might get a little bit more and the breeze isn't impacting it as much. Let's try that little 50%, I call it, little there, good flight. That's what I like to work on, that same motion, because it's so beneficial for your golf swing if you can get that same flight. And I can feel out of that one there, 74 was the number. A Little bit higher, got underneath that one. So there's a technique thing. How far did that go when it's not quite committed as much? 76, okay, got away with it. Pitched at 70. Another good flight, good pass, good landing, good spin. And I'm watching all the time. And honestly, that's how you get 76 again. That's how you get good with wedges. That is how you make the right choices when you buy wedges. Don't just go there and think, I'm gonna make this decision based on what I feel on that day. Make the decision based on what you get on a day like today when you're hitting flighted wedge shots with your alignment stick, with your rotation, turn your belt buckle, control it against the tree line. Always try and hit towards something in the distance so you can see that, control the flight against that. If you have Trackman, great, but make your wedge choices based on what you've learned from the previous year, two years of playing those wedges rather than just rolling in and thinking, okay, I'm gonna get a brand new wedge today and this is gonna be the decision I make for the rest of the season. Not how I do it. Good area to work at, great area to fit because there's a lot you can talk about. We haven't even touched on bunkers yet. We haven't even touched on using the sand and the bounce and what that means. Yes, I've got videos in this selection that talk about bounce, but when it comes to using it in the sand, I'll get to that. But here's how I would use the start of any practice session with or without a launch monitor, with or without breeze, and start to build the picture. For example, I know in breeze, the gap between these two wedges isn't quite as great as it could be. What do I then have to do to increase that 52 yardage or hit more variables? What does my 56 go at the nine o'clock, three o'clock swing? And then of course you can add other feels like a, I have a nine o'clock firm or a go a little longer, how far does that shot go? The more accurate you can get, the better wedge player you can be and the better choices you're then gonna be able to make when it comes to buying your mill grind three wedges. If you like what you see, bang something in the comments there, let me know, hit that like button. There'll be more videos like this coming next Tour Truck Tuesday.